Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to our vegetable garden here in Spokane, Washington. We are in hardiness zone 5B to 6A, somewhere in there. And before I get started with today's video, I wanted to let you know it is currently 27 degrees Fahrenheit. So I hope you appreciate how dedicated I am in getting these weekly videos out to you. <laughs> so what's the topic for today? Well, this is the first of three weeks of videos about dealing with damaging vegetable garden insect pests organically. That is so important and it's so doable. So the insects I'm going to talk about today are aphids, cabbage worms, and leaf miners. And in the case of these three types of insects, being proactive rather than reactive makes all the difference. So that's what I'm going to talk about now, and then I'm going to talk about other kinds of nasty insects in the next two weeks. So let's get started. Man, it's bright out here. I need my sunglasses. But at least it's giving me the illusion that it's warm here. <laughs> now, before I dive into the details of these insects that I'm going to talk about today, I wanted to explain why organic gardening is so important. You know, I have been an organic gardener for decades, and I'm here to tell you it's very easy. You just need a little background knowledge, and that makes all the difference. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to eat produce that has been covered in different kinds of nasty pesticides. That's one of the reasons I grow vegetables and fruits, because I want to know how they were raised and handled, etc. Now, one thing that's rather alarming is that with the use of pesticides, there are a lot of insects that are developing resistance to them. So then people need to use more in order to try to control these insects. That is a dangerous direction to go. So what I want you to know is that organic gardening is very simple. And there are ways that you can exclude the damaging insects from specific crops and other types of techniques that you can use, and you'll learn about them in the coming weeks. Another thing that is very hard for gardeners to swallow, myself included, is that to have a healthy ecosystem in your garden, you need both beneficial insects and, yes, damaging insects, because that is what they feed on. And with the techniques I'm going to show you, I will demonstrate that it is very doable to get a very productive garden without having to resort to using chemicals. Let's talk about cabbage worms. I'm referring to those green caterpillars that love to munch on cabbage family crops. These include broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, collards, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi, mustard, radishes, rutabagas, and turnips. The adult form can be either a butterfly or a moth, depending on the species. Many of you have probably seen these white cabbage butterflies. Those are the adult form of cabbage worms. But there are also moths, such as this one, which is the adult version of cabbage loopers. As you can see by this photo, they move like an inchworm does. There are also diamondback caterpillars. And the adult stage is the diamondback moth. Each of these types of cabbage pests do basically the same thing. The adult butterfly or moth lays eggs onto the leaves, usually on the undersides. The eggs hatch into caterpillars, which chew on the leaves and cause all sorts of damage. What about aphids? I'm sure you've all seen these tiny insects, and boy, do they love cabbage family crops. As you can see by the photo, they have what I like to call tailpipes sticking out of their back ends, but they're technically called cornicles. And you never see a single aphid, right? There's always a gazillion of them on our plants. What's particularly frustrating is that the females are born pregnant. 
The males and females usually only mate at the end of the season so the eggs can overwinter and hatch in the spring to start the problem all over again. One other thing that's common about aphids is that they exude a clear, sticky substance called honeydew. That's that shiny stuff you see in this photo. When you see that on your cabbage family crops, that tells you aphids were causing trouble. While aphids can get on other types of vegetable crops, such as artichokes and peas, I think they are the most troublesome on cabbage family crops, such as broccoli. And what they're doing is they are using their piercing sucking mouth parts to extract the plant's juices. And a lot of times what you'll see is discolored or slightly puckered plant tissue. Leaf miners are particularly troublesome for beet family crops, which includes beets, spinach, and Swiss chard. Have you ever noticed little squiggly lines within the leaves? Those are caused by leaf miners. And since you harvest and eat the leaves of spinach and Swiss chard, plus the leaves of beets are absolutely delicious, that is a huge problem because you certainly don't want to eat those nasty little maggots. <laughs> so here's some information on leaf miners. The adult is a fly that looks like this. It lays eggs on the leaves, which hatch into little maggots. The maggots tunnel through the leaves while feeding. After about three weeks, they emerge from the leaf, drop down to the soil where they pupate, which is a stage in their life cycle. They then emerge from the soil anywhere from two to four weeks later as adult flies to begin the process all over again. With each of these types of insects, I have found that excluding them from the crops that they love to target is the easiest way of dealing with them. So I'm talking about the use of row covers. So I'm going to show you the two types that we use in our garden, and I want to explain why they work so well. This is the first type of row cover that we use. It's known as floating row cover. Rime is a common brand name of it. And you can see it's a woven fabric that lets sunlight and moisture through it. So if it were to rain, the plants will still get watered. But it acts as a physical barrier to keep certain types of damaging insects away. This is effective on crops that do not require pollination. So Today, with the insects I talked about, I mentioned cabbage family crops keeping aphids and cabbage worms away, and beet family crops for keeping leaf miners. None of those crops needs to be pollinated, which is why row covers are such a perfect solution. And I love the idea of exclusion instead of having to use some type of even an organic spray. The second type of row cover that we use is called agricultural insect netting, and this will be our third garden season of using it. I am so sold on it. So first of all, it's extremely durable. It's kind of like window screening that has tiny holes in it. I haven't had even aphids get through it, which is awesome. The other thing I really like about it is that you can see right through it without having to lift the cover off to see how your plants are doing. And what you're looking at here is a do-it-yourself project that is in my book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook, which is all about dealing with insects organically and also attracting more beneficial insects to your garden, which is important. So for that section of my book, Bill and I made these special row cover lids that are hinged, and that has worked really well. But I've also used the agricultural insect netting draped over beds with hoops on them, just like I do with the row cover. Now, I know you're going to ask, where did I get the agricultural insect netting? The name of the website is gardenport.com. And you have to go to the section that says insect netting. Now, if you've been wondering what these white things are on the outsides of our raised beds, now you're going to find out. 
So these are 10 inch tall lengths of PVC pipe that we have clamped to the sides of the beds. And those in turn hold hoops that we can drape either floating row cover or the agricultural insect netting over. We have different heights and widths of these. It's very important to use a hoop system of some sort or even a wire frame to support the row cover or agricultural insect netting rather than just draping it on top of the plants. That works much better to give them that support. Now these ones are actually made of old drip irrigation tubing that was in really bad shape. It was from an old landscape project we had and so we decided to recycle them into row cover hoops. So we cut them all up and that's what we're using. Now these PVC supports that hold the hoops are on all of our raised beds. Now I'm really good about rotating my crops every year and this way by having the supports on all of the beds no matter where I grow my broccoli for example I always will have this system available so that I can cover it and keep aphids and cabbage worms away. Now we have different size hoops that we've made over the years, different widths for different width beds, and so I want to show you a couple of those that we've made. So here is an example of a hoop we've made from black plastic poly sprinkler pipe. That sprinkler pipe is super inexpensive so you can make a whole bunch of them the size that you need and they are really durable. We've also made hoops out of conduit and this is for our four foot wide beds that are in a different section of the garden and these have worked really well. These will last forever and the projects for making the row cover hoops is also in my book. I'm not meaning to turn this into a commercial for my book, but I want you to know about this. And for this project with the conduit, we show you how to make a hoop bender. <laughs> so that was an interesting project. But anyway, you know, hoops can be different heights and widths and diameters. But the main thing you want to know is that having a support for your row cover is very important. Now once you have your support system for row cover in place, then what you're going to do is drape either floating row cover or agricultural insect netting over the hoops. Of course it's really windy now, <laughs> so I probably shouldn't try to do this myself. But you get it onto the hoops, then you want to weight down the perimeter with bricks or boards you have lying around and that's so the wind won't blow it off and also sneaky insects can't find a way in. The most important thing you need to know about using row covers is that you want to put it in place as soon as you plant your seeds or seedlings because if you wait problems can already be occurring. Now there are certain types of insects including the ones I talked about today that can overwinter either in the soil, like the leaf miners, or in plant debris. And if you are really good about cleaning up your garden at the end of the season, that's taking away the plant debris for them to overwinter in. But if you are good about rotating where you have planted different types of crops, that makes it more difficult for anything overwintering in the soil to find specific crops. I want to emphasize that row covers are an option for crops that do not need to be pollinated. However, you can cover plants that will need pollination for the early part of the season and then remove the cover when they start to bloom. I'm referring to protecting plants that might have serious problems such as flea beetles or squash bugs and you're protecting the plants for that early part of the season. Now if you didn't use row cover, you do have some options for controlling aphids, cabbage worms, and leaf miners. So for aphids, you can hose them off of the plants with a strong jet of water from your hose. I have read that they will not have the energy to go back up onto the plants, and I'm hoping that's right. 
you can squish a few of them and I've read that when you do that it releases a natural compound that attracts beneficial insects and boy do beneficial insects love eating aphids. For cabbage worms keep a close eye on your plants if you see any holes or damage look for the caterpillars and squish them I know that sounds disgusting but that's what you got to do. You can spray the plant's leaves with Bacillus thuringiensis, which is known as Bt. It is an organic product that will kill the caterpillars. If you have leaf miners, those are a real challenge because the maggots that are doing all the damage are tunneling between the layers of cells in the leaves. So when you use an organic spray, it does not really impact them because they're not out on the surface. So if you happen to see squiggly lines on a leaf and you can see there's a maggot in there, disgusting as it sounds, squish it and then dispose of the leaf. And you know, when you have insect problems and especially if there's still insects on the leaves and things that you take off of plants, it's a better idea to dispose of them than to put them in your compost pile. Okay, that is everything I wanted to cover for today. I can't wait for next week because we get to talk about more kinds of bugs in the garden and I'm hoping that I'll have all kinds of tips that you will find interesting and helpful. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening.